Hey yo, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens. It's Omni Dog here from Omni Dogs Vault with some reviews of some more books. I've read a lot of books this week, so I've got several review co videos coming up. And we will start out with two books. Um, there's two books in this series so far, and it is called Isabella by Dark Horse. Yeah, Dark Horse. And this is a very good book. Uh, it's about a Japanese Irish warrior woman. Uh, first of all, the art is fantastic. Uh, she is the daughter of a Japanese uh, warrior and an Irish redhead woman. And she has red hair, so she's always called red. And she was made fun of in school. But she grows up to be a fierce warrior, and she's out on a journey to find her sister. Um, her father, her dead father's ghost, is with her on her travels. So you know already this book has a bit of occult stuff going on in it. She meets up with all manner of beings, all kinds of people, some friends, some foes. Um, but this is about the journey and about her experience uh, looking for her lost sister whom she doesn't speak to anymore. Uh, she left home, left her mother and sister, left home to search out her uh, father and then found out her father was dead or no, went to go to war with him. Um, and the sister felt like she abandoned the mother the mother was murdered, and so the sister left, never to speak to Isabella again. Um, and so she wants to make amends and find her sister. So she's on an epic journey to find her sister. She meets up and collects people along the way. Um, they uh, have um, amazing and epic adventures through the countryside as they are traveling to find her uh, sister. They even get on board a ship to sail, um, chase after her sister who is on a ship right ahead of them. Now, the art is really spectacular. I really love the art. Um, Isabella grows as a person, learns things, learns to trust people, learns who to mistrust. Uh, and this is just book one, so it's quite... Um, a journey where she, and of course there's lots of fights because she's a majorly uh, trained as a warrior. So there's tons of fights in this and they're well choreographed and very interesting. And I won't, well, she does find her sister at the end of this book and her sister sends her on a journey to their mother's homeland of Ireland. This is back in like the 12th century. So that's what book two is about, Isabella's journey to Ireland back then. And she has, uh, she has a, um, a quest that she needs to fulfill while she's there in Ireland. And so that's what this story is about. This second story is about her journey and her quest in Ireland. Um, and it is um, it is epic and fun, full of the occult, full of uh, fantasy uh, monsters, samurai sword fighting. Uh, it's everything you want. It's really fun. I loved it a lot, and I think you will too. So this is Isabella, books one and two from Dark Horse. Uh, the next one is from Kyle Starks, and it's called Kill Them All. And this, of course, was rec rec recommended to me by Kristen Robertson. Uh, she knows Kyle Starks. And now, his art style may or may not appeal to you. It's, it's very cartoony, and this is about a cop and an assassin who need to get to the top of a building... He wants to get his reputation back. The assassin has her own goals where, that she wants. Um, 
at the top of this building that's heavily guarded. And you might not think it looking at this art, but um, Kyle Starks really does. Um, if I said Kyle Higgins, I meant Kyle Starks. I may have said Kyle Higgins. Um, Kyle Starks art. Uh, he actually choreographs fights really well. Um, and I really, really got a huge kick out of this book. This, uh, this cop done wrong and this assassin um, uh, who's a bit of a samurai herself uh, both want to get to the top of this warlord's building to prove a point and they have and they have to fight their way up there to get there and in order to do that they have to kill them all uh, everybody on their way up there and this story is great I really enjoyed it uh, the fight scenes are are fun and kinetic and epic, and there's lots of them. So if you like lots of fight scenes with a good story, characters you care about, it's um, it's it's violent and funny. It's very violent and very funny, um, but I really dug it. And so Kyle Starks really nails it here. Uh, I highly recommend Kill Them All. This next book, Kyle Starks wrote, but didn't illustrate, and this is Dead of Winter, Good Good Dog, and it's based on a, on a game, a tabletop game, um, and it's an odd premise, and it, <laughs> it's basically there's a zombie apocalypse, and this stunt dog that is a really good dog that um, I don't think we see enough of, quite frankly. We see too much of the regular people. We need to see more of the dog. He's like a hero dog and he helps the people a lot in this zombie apocalypse. Um, it, it is a zombie apocalypse during the winter and he turns out to be a zombie killing machine. Um, and I, I would say uh, the art is fine and the story is fine. One of the funniest things is when the girls dis discover this huge untouched uh, in a drugstore, this huge supply of tampons. They feel like they've gone to heaven, which was funny. Um, so they're all trying to survive in this zombie apocalypse with a psycho cop who's, I don't know what his story was, but he was he's a crazy cop. Um, and I, I feel like this book could have used a little bit more of the dog. Um, it, it seemed to be sort of a glass, um, it wasn't a glass half full. It just, it just wasn't, it just, it seemed a little empty, emptier whenever the dog wasn't around. The people really weren't that interesting to me, um, even though they had a guy dressed up as Santa and who lived in a mall. Um, I, I feel like this could have been a little bit better than it was. It wasn't bad. Um, but as far as, as Oxy, Oxy, I just saw that's what the guy had, Santa had in his stash. But as far as zombie apocalypses go, although this is a cool scene when the dog gets a sword and takes over and hacks apart all these zombies, that was a cool scene. So this book was uh, pretty good in my estimation. Not quite as good as Kill Em All, but pretty good. Den of Witter, Good Good Dog. Now here's a really good book that you may not have heard of. I only found out about it because Omar told the Uncanny Omar told me about it at Baltimore Con, and we picked it up from the writer himself, Tom Payer. It's from Ahoy Comics, and it's called The Wrong Earth. Um, you, you may or may not have heard of it, but it's basically what if Batman 66 traded places and earths with the dark knight returns and if they switched places um they uh you've got a batman 66 type character in this who has a robin then on a parallel earth you've got a dark knight returns type tormented character um they they come from two completely different places the the uh um and i can't think of what the uh Dragonfly is his name. Uh, uh, on the Dark Knight Returns type Earth, the, cro the uh, cops are all crooks. 
And on Dragonfly's uh, Batman 66 world, he's got colorful villains that really don't do any damage. And somehow these guys get transferred through a magic mirror to each other's Earths. And it is one of the most fun books I've read in a long time. I highly recommend you get it. It's not expensive. Uh, the art is great. Um, it's by Tom Payer from Ahoy Comics. It's probably, um, I don't know, on Amazon or IST. I'm not sure. Uh, I picked it up right there at the store at the uh, Baltimore Con. But imagine the Dark Knight Returns in Batman 66's universe and Batman 66 in the Dark Knight Returns universe. It's great. I really dug this book. Um, and I even got it signed by Tom Payer. Let's see. Where was it signed? Here it is. So there. And the... Oh, it looks like Jamal Eagle, the uh, artist, was there too. Nice. So, yeah. Highly recommend The Wrong Earth. Really good book. And then the last book for this uh, review will be Cullen Bunn's Cold Spots. This was pretty dark. It involves a guy who um, has a, 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 an ex-wife and a daughter he's never really paid attention to, and all of a sudden they disappear. And he wants to find out what's happened to them. And it's about his search for them. This is very occult, by the way, supernatural horror is what it is and it's about his investigation into where they are and what happens when he finds them he um it turns out uh the little girl uh can see dead people and i don't want to tell you much more than that but she's been she's the mother got coerced into uh uh, being um, taken in by a cult and the cult is trying to use the girl for their own nefarious purposes and the father discovers this all and um, it's uh, it's pretty intense there's lots of supernatural horror going on in this book with this little girl who doesn't talk at all but can see dead people and the mother who realizes she's made a mistake and the father who's trying to save them all even though he doesn't have a good relationship with him. So I recommend this book as... Um, a, I'd be interested in, in reading more of this uh, as to what the girl can do um, under... under the. Uh, hmm, I don't want to say too much more. I'd like to read more of this about the girl. I don't want to give away what happens. Uh, but this is typical Cullen Bunn, great horror that is very, very interesting, and it's always cold. That's the cold spots, because whenever um, the ghosts are near, the temperature plunges. So it's always cold in this book, and the ghosts are always near this guy's daughter. So that is Cullen Bunn's Cold Spots. And that wraps it up for this review. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment, like, and subscribe and uh, I will be back with more views in just a little bit peace and love peace and love thank you